A gaita é um instrumento de sopro que você provavelmente já conhece. E sabia que ela também é chamada harmônica? Muito comum na música folk americana e no blues, a harmônica também é usada na música erudita. E neste meio, uma das peças que mais se destaca é o Concerto para a Harmônica de Heitor Vila lobos O gaitista americano Robert Bonfiglio veio a BH para tocar esse concerto junto com a Filarmônica de Minas Gerais e conversou um pouquinho com a harmonia. When I was a little boy, um, I got in my Christmas stocking a harmonica. And I learned how to play Oh Susanna on it, like most kids do. And then by the time I was in high school, I started a blues band. And we played uh, this kind of... That was how I started as a little boy, played blues. And then later on, I decided to be serious about the instrument, and I went to Manus College of Music and Manhattan School of Music in New York City and got my master's in composition. I studied with a famous American composer named Aaron Copland. And after that, uh, I started playing in the studio all the movies and commercials and everything. And then pretty soon, along came machines. And the machines could play the harmonica sound on the keyboard, so we lost our job. And at the same time, in 1986, I did the world premiere of the Henry Cowell Harmonica Concerto with the Brooklyn Philharmonic and then with the Milwaukee Symphony, and then with the Los Angeles Philharmonic at the Hollywood Bowl. And ever since then, I've played harmonica concerti for my livelihood. When I was studying music, uh, I was playing classical music the, the entire time. Uh, that's how I, I decided that I wanted to be more serious about the instrument. And so I started playing these harmonicas. This is a chromatic harmonica. So this harmonica makes all different sounds like a piano. If you play without the button on the end, it's like the white notes on a piano. <laughs> And if you push the button in, you get the black notes. So you can play in any key on the chromatic harmonica. And it wasn't very long after that that I was studying with a, a, the first flute as a coach, uh, uh, the New York City Ballet. And I worked with him. I used to go to Carnegie Hall every week and study in one of the studios up above Carnegie Hall. And we started working on the Villa Lobos Harmonica Concerto. And so in 1988, then, I recorded it on RCA with Gerard Schwartz and the New York Chamber Symphony. And since then, I've played the Villa Lobos about 440 times with orchestras everywhere.
So there are about 60 concertos for the harmonica with orchestra, and Villa Lobos is one of the most famous composers that wrote for it. And you in Brazil are so lucky that to have a composer like Villa, Villa Lobos because it's, he's the number one Brazilian composer of classical music. Um, and very seldom do you have a country where one person can really be identified like that and be a modern composer. And it just, it's, it's a beautiful piece of music. It's beautifully, it's melodic. You know, the second movement. It's just such a pretty piece, you know. So I like it for its melody, and also just because it's very seldom that you can have uh, modern classical music that isn't dissonant, that actually sounds pretty to play and that the audience loves. And that's Villa, Villa Lobos. Very few other composers had a voice in modern uh, music that's singular at the same time that it is... Um, is beautiful. And I have to say, uh, working with Fabio Macchetti, you know, he's, it's just wonderful. I worked with him in Jacksonville in the States, and he's an amazing conductor. So you're so lucky to have him here. And then this hall, I've, this is the first time I've played here, but this sounds, it's, it's a great hall.